Hello stars, this is Miss Lee, your third grade literacy teacher, ready to rock and roll with you through literacy today. Before we get started, please make sure to have a nicely sharpened pencil and a notebook with you at hand. I will be starting off module 10 again with the essential question, why is it important to pass stories down to the next generation? Remember, by the end of this module, we should be able to answer this question using examples from our readings. Feel free to pause this video to think about this question. In today's lesson, we will be reading a legend called When the Giant Stirred by Cecilia Godkin. Our genre focus will be legend. No, not like a super famous person, like a Fortnite legend, but a story from the past that are believed by many people but not proven to be true. Please turn to page 356 and let's read more about legends. Legends are stories from the past that are believed by many people but cannot be proven to be true. Authors of legends tell the story through the plot. The events of a legend are thought to be based on real events. Authors of legends use sensory details and figurative language to develop the setting and the characters. Legends include the beliefs and ideas of a culture. Now while we read this text, I want you to use your background knowledge and clues to see what the author is trying to say. Authors don't always tell the reader everything in the text. Sometimes, great readers have to figure out things on their own. We call this making an inference. Please repeat after me, making an inference. For example, let's say you're on your way to school and you notice that the ground is wet. You can infer or make an inference that it rained earlier. You use clues to understand what happened even though no one told you it rained. You just inferred or made an inference. So before we get started reading When the Giant Stirred, let's preview some vocabulary. Here you see the words lagoon, garlands, belched, cinders, appease, and barren. Do these words look familiar to you? Yes, they're the words from yesterday's lesson. In the packet, you were required to use a dictionary to help define these words, but I have included the definitions here for you. Lagoon. A lagoon is an area of seawater that is separated from the ocean by rocks or sand. Garlands. Garlands are ropes made of flowers or leaves. Belched. If a volcano or chimney belched, it suddenly pushed out a large amount of smoke or fire. Cinders. Cinders are small black pieces of ash that are left after a fire has burned. Appease. If you appease someone, you try to make the person less angry by giving in to what he or she wants. Barren. If an area of land is barren, it is dry and cannot grow plants or trees. Please open your notebook to where you wrote down these words and write down the definitions. These are the same words you will be studying for the spelling bee. You will need to know how to spell these words, so make sure you practice. I recommend writing them on index cards or cut out pieces of paper. You can write the word on one side and the definition on the back. Feel free to pause the video. Okay, let's get started. Please turn to page 357 in your workbooks or just continue to follow this video. Remember, great readers track the words with their fingers or with their pencil. As we read, think about the question, what is the author trying to teach me in this story? Feel free to annotate the text as we read. So let's take a look at this cover. Wow, look at the illustration and title. Let's think about what events you think this will be about. I notice that there's a volcano and there's water surrounding the volcano, so it must be on an island. Hmm, let's see. Okay, let's turn to page 359 and get ready to read. Long, long ago in a blue, blue sea lay a green, green island. On the island, there were white sandy beaches with coconut palms where great sea turtles came by moonlight to bury their eggs in the sand. On the island, there were leafy green forests with brightly colored butterflies, where noisy red parrots screeched and chattered from the treetops. On the island, there was a cool blue lagoon, where many silvery fish swam in an underwater garden of strange and wondrous animals. Now how do the details in the illustrations match the text on page 359? And how do they help you understand the setting? Think about that question for a bit. Did you find any connections? 
If you look at paragraph three, it says there were leafy green forests with brightly colored butterflies, where noisy red parrots screeched on the treetops. Do you see that? Let's try to match other examples of the text to match the illustration. On the island, there was a sleepy village of grass thatched houses where gentle, smiling people went about their daily lives. They collected coconuts from the beaches, fruit from the forests, and fish from the lagoon. Over all of this peaceful island towered a great cone shaped mountain. Most of the time it was quiet, but sometimes it let out a puff of smoke or rumbled like a giant mumbling in his sleep. Wow, what a descriptive passage. Did anyone spot the example of figurative language? Take a minute to look at the passage again and see if you spot it. Yes, in paragraph 7, the author compares the mountain to a rumbling giant mumbling in his sleep. Now, is the mountain really a giant? No, the author compares the mountain to a giant because a giant is big, scary, and dangerous, even if it's sleeping. When the giant stirred, the people of the village took garlands of flowers up the mountain and threw them in the crater at the top. They prayed that the sweet, heavy scent of the flowers would put their mountain god back to sleep and give him pleasant dreams. But there came a day when the mountain would not go back to sleep. It rumbled and roared. It belched out black smoke, which fell as a rain of cinders on the village. Now, the author doesn't exactly tell us how the people felt when the giant stirred, meaning the mountain started to move a little, but let's use the illustration and text evidence to make an inference. Why would they pray for the mountain to go back to sleep? What might they be feeling? Happy, thankful, nervous, worried? Please write down an inference on what the people may be feeling and how you know this. You can write this directly in your notebooks. The people were afraid to go up the mountain. Instead, they huddled fearfully in their homes. The parrots and all the other birds flew screeching and chattering up into the sky. They made a great, colorful, noisy cloud which flew away across the sea in search of another island on which to live. I want you to check out the illustration. What does the illustration tell you about the island people's feelings that the text does not? Look at the children and their facial expressions. The chief of the village gathered his people around him. He told them that the birds were the messengers of the gods. He said that when the birds left, the mountain would awake in anger and no amount of flowers would appease their mountain god now. Remember, appease means to try to make the person less angry by giving in to what he or she wants. The chief told his people it was time to leave their beautiful island home. The people did as they were told. They gathered their belongings and hurried with them to the beach. They loaded the boats and paddled away across the sea, looking for another island on which to live. Can you make an inference based on what you know about animals here? What do you know about animals and why they may leave a place? That's right. Animals can sense danger. I think the birds sensed that the mountain was going to wake up and that they needed to find a safe place to live. Hmm. So let's make a prediction as to what will happen next. For days after the people left, the mountain belched out black smoke. It rumbled and roared till the ground shook and shook and shook. Then, the island people heard the explosion miles away across the sea. They had just landed on another island, but they knew they were not yet safe. Their legends told them the anger of the gods stretched across oceans. Does anybody notice the fancy text feature on paragraph 16? Does anybody remember what that's called? That's correct. It's called an M dash. And if you notice when I read that, it made you anticipate what was coming next. So they scrambled up the mountainside of their new island as fast as they could go. When they were safely out of reach, they stopped and looked back as a great tidal wave swept toward them. For days afterward, huge waves crashed against the shore. For weeks afterward, the sky was black with smoke and cinders rained down from above. But the people were safe in their new island home, and they began to build a village. But what of the old island? It was just a smoking ruin. 
The mountain, in its fury, had split apart. Not a single living creature had survived. For many months, the island was just a barren black rock in a blue, blue sea. Do you notice how the author often repeats words? The author often does this to emphasize the sensory details. For example, in paragraph 22, the author states the blue, blue sea. And if you notice in the illustration, doesn't it look quite blue? Little fishes swam around it, and some found their way into the lagoon. Strange and wondrous animals began to grow there. One day, some seeds blew over in the wind and lodged in a crevice in the rock. Little plants began to grow. Later, bigger plants began to grow. Storms washed white sand up onto the shore. Coconuts bobbed by in the water and came to rest on the sand. They put down roots and began to grow into coconut palms. Then great sea turtles came by moonlight to lay their eggs in the sand. Weeks later, little hatching turtles broke free from their nests and scampered across the beach into the sea. Butterflies blew over on the wind and found a home among the plants. A pair of parrots flew by and settled in the coconut palms. Now check out the illustration. Doesn't this illustration remind you of one that we saw previously in the text? Month by month, year by year, plants and animals returned until they were once again white sandy beaches with coconut palms, leafy green forests with brightly colored birds and butterflies, and a cool blue lagoon with silvery fish in an underwater garden of strange and wondrous animals. Perhaps one day there would be also a sleepy village of grass-thatched houses with gentle smiling people. For the legends say that, just as the mountain gods destroy themselves, so too are they reborn as islands, which rise out of the sea in an endless cycle of destruction and renewal. What does this tell us about the importance of legends to the island people? Do people really believe in these legends? I want you to take a moment and open your notebook and write these questions down. This time we're going to have two questions. The first one is, what was the author trying to teach us through the story? The second question is, what does this teach us about life? Remember to set your timer for five minutes and do a free write in responding to these questions. Please make sure to answer the questions on page 377 in your workbooks. For today's vocabulary work, Please draw a picture for each one of your vocabulary words. For some words, you may want to draw a comic strip. Have fun!